Lawmakers in Washington, D.C. are keeping an anxious eye on the horrific events unfolding in one of the United States' closest non-NATO allies. But congressional activity on Capitol Hill is at a standstill because of the historic ouster of Kevin McCarthy from the speakership and only an interim speaker left in charge. The leadership vacuum is causing consternation from the White House as well, with a senior administration official saying, quote, there probably is a role for Congress here, and without a Speaker of the House, that is a unique situation we're going to have to work through. Joining me now for more is Congressman Benny Thompson from the state of Mississippi. He's also the ranking member of the House Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, first of all, I'm wondering, have you been able to receive any briefings, classified or not, on the situation in Israel? And is there anything that you can share with our viewers at this moment? Well, there's nothing that we received in a classified setting. Everything we've received so far uh, has been in the public domain. So uh, there's a need for that information. But as you said in your introduction, uh, we're kind of at a loss because we don't have a leader uh, in terms of a speaker. And so as soon as we can get uh, a speaker elected, uh, we can get back to business. The House not having a permanent speaker is creating a lot of agita debate, Congressman, whether acting speaker Patrick McHenry can even participate in intelligence briefings like you and I were just talking about and how important that information is. What is your opinion on the fact that there's a leadership vacuum in the House right now that may directly and, and substantively affect the situation in Israel? Well, there's no question uh, there's a vacuum. Uh, as you know, there's a uh, a team between the House and the Senate called the Gang of Eight. Uh, well, one of those eight members is the Speaker of the House of Representatives, which uh, we don't have. The question is whether or not uh, our Speaker Pro Tempera, uh, McHenry, uh, can participate or not. So uh, there are a lot of gaps in this situation. The crisis in Israel uh, is just expanding that. But it's part of, uh, you know, the Republican. Um, what I should say, um, confusion on their part. Uh, they ha they elected a leader, they're a majority party. And when you're uh, the leader and in charge, you have to demonstrate leadership. Right now, that leadership is not there. You know, Congressman, I have to ask, with all of the drama that was going on and the chaos that was created by the GOP leading to the ultimate ouster of Kevin McCarthy last week, creating the vacuum that you and I are talking about, was that just not contemplated, This the knowledge that the House can't move forward in the, in the absence, with the absence of a permanent speaker, to be able to get legislation even introduced and passed? Was that not even a part of the, the analysis or the calculus by the Republicans when they were trying to well, figure out how to do their job? Well, you know, it's so unfortunate. Uh, I've been through a number of speakers during my 30 years here. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Normally, uh, if there are some uh, missteps or things that need to be worked out, the speaker and his team would work it out. It was obvious that the speaker, uh, to become speaker, gave up an, an awful lot of authority that goes with the position. And so what you have was an impotent speaker uh, with nothing to use as leverage. Uh, he gave up all the tools in the toolbox. And it's obvious uh, from the fact that the very people he did the most for uh, ended up being his worst nightmare. I wanted to ask you as well, considering the fact that there's only two names that have put their hat into the proverbial ring, Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise. Is that kind of um, now becoming a part of a discussion in the House when it comes to the prospective permanent new Speaker of the House, seeing how we have this type of conflict that's going on in one of uh, the United States' closest allies in Israel? Well, uh, I would hope not. Uh, but it does not bore well when you look at what's occurring. Uh, if we can't, in short order, uh, elect a Speaker, then it's impossible to help our friends around the world. Uh, they're both Democratic and Republican supporters of Israel uh, in the House. But if we can't get our House in order and elect a speaker, uh, then Israel is at risk. So it is important for us, uh, whenever we have convened back uh, this week, uh, to expeditiously uh, elect a speaker.
And so my Republican colleagues need to get their act together. They're the majority party. And, you know, Democrats, we're the law uh, opposition. But if it were up solely to the Democrats, uh, we'd elect Hakeem Jeffries speaker. But obviously, at this point, we don't have the numbers. Uh, we'll probably uh, put his name forward again. Uh, we will vote uh, in unity for him. Uh, and perhaps the, the Republicans can take some uh, lead from the Democrats and get their house in order, elect the speaker so we can move forward and, and, and provide the leadership, not just uh, on, on Israel, but on Ukraine and other issues around the world uh, like we've been known for. I'm glad you bring up Ukraine, Congressman, because I think that's an important part of this discussion. How are your Republican colleagues on the uh, across the aisle, how are they reconciling the fact that there's bipartisan support to be able to provide aid to Israel, and yet the Republicans are throwing up all the roadblocks to be able to provide aid to Ukraine? Well, you know, it's kind of who Republicans are during this, this session. Uh, I, I, again, I've been here a good while. And usually, uh, our Congress, uh, uh, we stand for certain things. We stand for the principles of democracy. We stand to support our friends around the world. Uh, Ukraine has been a friend uh, uh, of the United States. We can't abandon them. Uh, what you see there is the lack of leadership that former Speaker McCarthy demonstrated. But again, as I said, uh, to become Speaker, those 15 votes uh, he had to give up a lot. And when you can get uh, just a few members, eight members of your party, uh, to take you down, uh, you know you're in serious trouble. So uh, I want us to get back together uh, as soon as possible, elect a speaker, and do the right thing. Uh, you know, our reputation as a, as a country uh, is on the line. Uh, people are looking to us for leadership. But if the House of Representatives can't elect its leader uh, because of some misfits there who uh, uh, don't want uh, things uh, to work, then we're in bad shape. It might be an opportunity for Republicans, if they can't get it together, uh, to come and talk to our Democratic leadership and, and work something out uh, with Democrats. Uh, we're not unreasonable, uh, but you know they have to uh, say, look, we're in trouble. We can't get our act together. And as Americans, if nothing less, less uh, let's work together and move forward. And show some bipartisan support for leader Hakeem Jeffries so things can get done. Congressman Benny Thompson, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.